Hi, everyone. Um, this is a very important topic for you today. Um, I'm Marcia of my Bloated Belly Club. I am a certified um, integrative nutrition coach and also I practice um, natural, um, natural health. I'm a natural health practitioner. And I wanted to talk today about um, the stages of change. You, all of us at some point in time, um, will want to start or develop a new habit and what it will take to get that habit sorted. Yeah. So let us begin healthy habits, stages of change. Now, you may have heard it can take anywhere from um, it, 21 days. Most um, health programs, a lot of them, you have 21 days, 30 days. Um, I actually, when I trained in the area of natural health, um, any health program, the first health program, which basically was the um, detox, a full body detox, was anywhere from 40 to 50 days. After that, the whole eating plan was 90 days, teaching someone how to develop new habits around food. It does take time. If you want to develop strong habits that are lasting, life-changing. Um, this can take anywhere from 21, depend, 21 days, depending on the individual, all the way up to 267 days. Yes, it can take almost a year to form new habits. It depends on the habit that you're trying to change or develop. Um, and it already it also depends on the individual. Um, so let's talk about it. So in the beginning, we think about the change that we want to make. I'm thinking about change. So at this stage, I am looking at what it is I'm doing. Say I'm a smoker, and um, you know, I know that smoking isn't good for me. I am already seeing that it is affecting my health. I have a cough that I can't seem to get rid of. Um, and my doctor told me it may be helpful to look at cessation, to stop smoking altogether. So therefore I go home and I'm contemplating the idea of um, giving up my cigarettes or my vape, yeah? Yes, vaping, um, vaping, there are studies that are coming out that show that vaping um, can have been linked to cancer. So if you are vaping and you've been told it is safe, please look for the information out there. It's not as safe as you think it is. You're, all, you're replacing one chemical for another. You're replacing all the tar and, and um, nicotine that goes into your body, you're not giving up the nicotine with the vape, but you're eating oils that um, you're inhaling chemicals that your body was never created to um, metabolize. So at this stage, you're considering change, but you're not quite ready to start. You believe that your health and well-being will improve with new healthy habits, it will, and you're not sure how you will deal with roadblocks. So you've thought about it. You spent the entire weekend or the week um, thinking about it. You've made up your mind and you've decided to create a plan. Now this usually, this creation of a plan, if we bring this back to say starting a new exercise routine, you sit down and you create a plan thinking about specific tactics that will work for you. When I leave work, when I'm finished at the office, do I go straight to the gym or do I come home and then go to the gym? The likelihood, if you're a very disciplined person, you will come home, relax a little bit and then go to the gym. But someone else may say, you know what? I need to go to the gym straight from work because if I go home, I'm not leaving. 
you might be a bit of a house a house bug. You like your home. And when you get home, you feel comfortable, you start to relax, you de-stress from your day, and you say, look, that's it, I'm not going anywhere. So you start to prepare. So preparation, what do I need to get to the gym after work? You pack a bag, you make sure that you have your gym clothes, comfortable shoes, and you start setting specific goals. What are those goals? Um, where do I start? Do I start with cardio? Do, do I build myself up slowly? Can I afford to hire a personal trainer? And you're preparing to take action. Then I've started to make those changes. So you're following your plan. You set out to achieve your goals and you begin. Um, you, you're starting to make changes to your eating and activity habits. Um, so you've been making the changes over six months. You are adjusting to how it feels to eat healthier. I remember I had to do this. Um, when I started my journey in natural health, one of the um, disciplines that I um, was trained in was microscopic blood analysis. And this um, gave me an opportunity. It helped me to see what was going on in my own body. And I was shocked. But I don't know why I was shocked because I didn't drink a lot of water. I um, did not eat a lot of vegetables. And... Um, Coca-Cola, I started my day with a Coca-Cola, a 20 ounce Coke. And my kidneys were already being affected. Um, I saw lots of organisms in my blood and I decided after two days of being depressed about what I saw, um, I decided that I was going to actively do something about it. And I got into detox. The detox helped me to, um, get sugar out of my diet. Um, it made me realize how much I crave junk food. And at the end of the 50 day period, or it wasn't 50 days, it was 40. At the end of the 40 day period, um, I couldn't even tolerate ice cream. I realized that I had a, not that I didn't know, but it solidified it for me that I had um, a lactose intolerance. And that is what a detox does. So I got accustomed to this new body that I was feeding. Um, I was eating more vegetables and I was actually enjoying it. And I began working towards overcoming the things that held me back. My taste buds changed when I did the detox. So Coca-Cola and so forth, that became a thing of the past. Even today, if I have a Coke, I'm telling you, it may be once in a year, once a year. I'm kidding you not. I drink water. That's my predominant drink. Um, if I go out, I may have, um, depending on where I go, I may have the occasional glass of wine, perhaps. But other than that, it's mostly water. Sparkling water is my favorite when I'm out at the table. And then it's about maintenance. I have a new routine. I, um, you become used to your new changes and you are being consistent. You've been consistent with them for the last four months. So maintenance, the change has come about. You have um, discovered different ways to stick with your new routine. So the gym becomes second nature. The days that you don't go for the go to the gym, you might go for a walk or a run. So you're teaching yourself to adapt in, in these new changes that you're making. You've had a setback, but you've been able to get past them. And then here are some barriers. These are things that we tell ourselves. Barrier number one, I don't have time. That is the proverbial excuse for a lot of people. I don't have time. I don't have time to cook. I don't have time to go to the gym. I don't have time to take care of myself. I don't have time. But the thing is, all of us have the same amount of time, 24 hours in a day. 
what is important to understand, we make time for the things that are important to us. Yeah. So make your new healthy habit a priority. Taking care of your health is should be your top priority. We only have one body. There's a verse of scripture in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, that says, above all things, yeah, I'm going to read it for you. I actually, um, I beseech you, brethren, um, oh, let me find it. I think I need to find it. All right, and I'm going to read it for you because I think it's important, especially for Christians, we we um I've seen many Christians, they they have very active lives. And as soon as they become believers in Christ, unfortunately, we become um couch potatoes, we tend to eat more, be and then the excuse we make is that, well, I only have one vice, and that's you know, that's I will eat. And then we become overweight. We don't do anything about it. And then when we get sick as a result of our inactivity, the first person we blame is the devil. Yeah. Well, I have news for you, dear Christian. If you are not actively taking care of yourself and you get sick, it is your fault. So please, let us, not everything that happens to, to us, our health, our circumstances, not everything is the devil's fault. A lot of time, it's our own fault and our um, inability to do what the word of God says. So I'm going to tell you, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 says, I, and this is in the Amplified Version. I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, I beg of you in view of all the mercies of God to make a decisive dedication of your bodies, presenting all your members and faculties as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable, holy and well-pleasing to God, which is your reasonable service and spiritual worship. God expects us to take care of our bodies. It is written in the word of God. I just read it for you. He expects us to take care of our bodies. So whatever I tell you, I tell me. Because I'm not a great fan of the gym, but I do love walking. But I also know one other thing. I am lazy. I am lazy. And I often find it hard to go to do the next step. I'm not motivated. So walking, I love walking. I could walk for a long time, um, but I like having company. But I try to inveigle my husband sometimes, but he's not interested. He doesn't like walking. He thinks I should be running, the gentleman who isn't doing anything either, by the way. But we need to find someone who can mot mot motivate us and keep us motivated. So think about the most important reasons for being fit and healthy. I can think of one, maintaining um, your weight, going into your older years, um, having all of your health so that you're not dependent on a healthcare system that will medicate you, not necessarily heal you or show you how to heal yourself. So these are some of the things. So what did you, what did you, why did you start what you did in the first place? Yeah. Um, would you like to stop worrying about your health? That's another reason. What is the motivator for keeping you going? One of my motivators in my early years was that I don't like eating healthy foods. I call salad rabbit food. Now today I eat, I want to, I make sure that we have a wide variety of vegetables throughout the week so that my family is eating more veg. Why? Because in my training all those years, and I saw things change when I came to, um, to Britain, to the United Kingdom. Moving here in 2018, I saw a shift in how I eat, yeah? 
Um, I came from the Caribbean and everything, a lot of what we ate, um, it was fresh. We ate too much of it. We we cooked. We like we, we are a population that loves to cook. We like um we 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 like eating all sorts of foods. We are a very diverse nation. So we had um we have so many different cultures that we were able to enjoy a lot of what they prepared, but oftentimes it wasn't very healthy. So I saw a shift when I came to the UK. And now I am deaf, I'm working towards getting myself back to where I used to be, where I ate a lot more veg. 75% of the foods that were on my plate were vegetables. Yeah. We use carbohydrates as, as fillers because let's let's be honest, food is expensive and you want to sit and have a plate of food that fills you and be using the wrong types of foods to fill us. Yeah. So if you're having carbohydrates, make sure that they are um, rich in fiber because fiber is another thing that fills. Stay away from the simple carbs. I don't like physical activity. I don't need to spend time in the gym to stay active. As I said, I like walking. What do you do enjoy doing? Um, one thing I will say is to thine own self be true. Be honest. Be honest with, with yourself. I know for me, after a hard day's work, I mean, we've had rain all day today. And oftentimes after a hard, uh, a long day's work and you're sitting in front of your computer, I hop on the computer um, because I I practice, I, I, I work my business in my spare time. Yeah, I have two jobs. I have this, my business, and I also have a day job. But I love my business. I love health and wellness. I love educating my, my clients. I love educating all of you who happen to listen to me. And I thank you for that. Yeah. All right. So I can't do this on my own. That's, that's another thing we tell ourselves. So find other people to be active with you. Get friends and coworkers, family members, and help them to keep you motivated and to get you going. I don't know enough about healthy habits. You don't need to know enough about healthy habits. Talk to a, a professional, talk to someone. You don't have to be an expert to change your habits. You need a few tips and ideas can do you wonders. And once you get yourself on, on track, you're gonna find it easier and easier to move forward. If you are dealing with health issues, reach out to me, let me know, and I would be more than happy to speak to you. And track your progress. Look for ways, track your progress so that you know how you're staying on track. Review your plan. Is it working? Write down your progress. Don't be too hard on yourself. There are times where you're going to miss a day or so. Don't worry about it. Keep a journal so you know exactly what's going on with you. Overcome your roadblocks. Problems solved to outsmart your barriers. Think about the things that are holding you back and make smart steps in place and put smart steps in place to overcome them. Ask a friend, a friend or family member to help. Trust me, there's somebody out there who needs some motivation just like you. Yeah, start asking around. You'll be surprised to know how many people would be willing to join you. Reward yourself. Now, you don't always have to reward yourself with food. You can reward yourself with a relaxing shower, um, fruit smoothies. But I'm going to say concerning fruit smoothies, be very, very careful. Because if you're trying to lose weight or you are... Um, Insulin intolerant, you do not want to do a fruit smoothie. This may not be a good idea. Um, so be careful with that, please. 
try a vegetable, a green smoothie instead, all vegetables, a phone call to a friend. Um, if you like the phone and you like spending time on it, call a friend. Maybe you could meet up with your friend, go shopping, go sightseeing, go I, I, um, window shopping, yeah? Um, a new workout outfit. Choose rewards carefully, as I said, and put your, pat yourself on the back. If negative thoughts creep in, remind yourself how much good you are doing for your body with the changes you're doing. And trust me, if you stick with, with all of those changes, you will see results. Yeah. So I hope this encourages you. Uh, if you would like to have more information, you can pop over to my bloatedbellyclub.com. Um, you can visit the free resources that I have uh, and you can download it's anything that you find that stands out to you. Have a look at it. Um, if you need help with anything, reach out to me. I'll be more than willing to speak with you. And uh, yeah, let's see if we can change some habits together. We all have ha a habit that we need to change or develop. And I would, be I would love to help you with that. Um, and if you want to get this particular handout, just reach out to me and I'll tell you how you can get it. Yeah? Okay. Bye.